with this circuit the objective was to create a pulsing capacitor discharge circuit that automatically pulsed every three to five seconds and I didn't want to have to use a 555 timer and in fact I think it would actually be more difficult to implement the 555 timer and I think I would still need most of this circuit anyway so I figured I'd try to just come up with a circuit that used just transistors and resistors and just basic components and I wanted to see if I could make a circuit that automatically pulsed every three to five seconds while discharging 350 volts from the capacitors so I was successful and I designed this circuit basically from scratch and it works really well and what you can do is using any high voltage generator such as this cheap eBay unit there that generates up to 400 volts you just supply 12 volts to it it supplies power out and it's adjustable it sends the high voltage to this circuit so you could use a a generator or you could use a solid state generator or you could use the flyback voltage off of the inductive kickback from a motor coil such as a pulse motor anything that has a high voltage or even a low voltage it doesn't matter this circuit will work with low high medium it doesn't matter it'll work from zero to a thousand volts and what it does is it will charge up those capacitors and then when the voltage threshold kicks the first SCR on right there which is just like a basically a transistor relay that's all that is it just either has on or off state it doesn't have a variable output so when that first SCR is kicked on it triggers these other two SCRs one of the SCRs shorts out the small capacitor killing the whole circuit the large SCR in the middle when that is triggered that discharges the large two capacitors and those large two capacitors are in series and you send in this case 350 volts out and it goes out over to this inductor coil and that's a 16 gauge inductor coil and it's 2.5 millihenries and that's actually a choke coil for a stereo system. It's just a regular choke coil. So what the idea is with this circuit is you're rhythmically pulsing a coil with 350 volts and it's a capacitor discharge circuit. Now the idea is Bob Beck said that the pulsed magnetic field has the potential to actually help the body and it's called low frequency pulsed low frequency pulsed magnetism and that's a lot different than anything they have today uh, apparently this is just what I've read apparently low frequency pulsed magnetism from an electromagnet applied to the human body is very suppressed by medical science Apparently there's some very strong evidence to suggest that a pulsed magnetic field may benefit the body. So that's something to look into. Uh, I'm not super familiar with pulsed magnetic fields and so this was my gateway into learning about that and I wanted to build this circuit in order to study it. So I'll show you how the circuit works. I'll turn it on. So it's very quiet, it's up and running, and I'll show you the oscilloscope reading. So right now it's sitting at about 310 volts. you can see that it pauses for about two seconds and then it charges back up and then rapidly discharges when it hits the threshold voltage and it does that without the use of a 555 timer and actually 
it's a very robust circuit because the SCRs are all rated for 800 volts up to 1000 volts. Two of them are rated for 800, one is rated for 1000 volts. The only thing that could go bad is the MOSFET which is on the far right and what that does is that simply switches on and off and when it switches on it turns the auxiliary output on to power this universal high voltage generator. Now you could replace this universal generator here with any type of high voltage generator. This just happens to be a universal high voltage flyback transformer and it just generates power. So I'm using that but I could use anything to create the high voltage or I could even send low voltage and high current through this circuit and it would work the same way. The SCR in the middle there it's a Little Fuse brand SCR and it is actually rated for up to 900 amps surge which is just incredible. It's rated for 1000 volts and up to 900 amps surge which is just crazy. I haven't actually sent that much power through it obviously but I am sending hundreds of amps through it each time that I discharge into this coil and you can hear it actually discharging right now. I'll show you the circuit diagram real quick. So that's the circuit diagram. If you want to pause the video you're welcome to use this circuit diagram. It's very simple but it works extremely well and the components don't get hot because everything is pretty much fully on or powered fully on. The IRF 510 MOSFET is what powers the circuit to turn it on and that is turned fully on by the use of a 9 volt Zener diode and you put that diode there on the input capacitor so what happens is when that input capacitor charges up to 9 volts it blows past the Zener diode and goes into the IRF 510 or IRF 840 MOSFET. MOSFETs are voltage activated they are not current activated and that's the only difference between a MOSFET and a transistor so they have basically infinitely high resistance on the input gate to turn them on. So basically once the voltage crosses over the Zener diode it can just flow unlimited into the MOSFET. There's very little conductivity across the gate of the MOSFET. So it works very very well and like a transistor. A transistor would not work the same way in this circuit. It would work but it wouldn't have the sharp turn on. And what I mean is you want the transistor, in this case the MOSFET, to turn on very 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 quickly and that eliminates heating because if you just slowly ramp something up and try to push a lot of current through it, it's just going to generate a lot of heat, which you don't want to do. Now all the other components are SCRs and they don't have a middle of the road setting. They're either on or off and in that case all of them are pulsing on and off and that again doesn't generate any excess heat. So the circuit is very very efficient and it doesn't require a 555 timer or any timer although you could use one. So that's the circuit. Now the SCRs can be any type of SCR but the primary one has to be rated for at least 500 volts and 500 amps because you're going to discharge the capacitors straight into a coil or straight into a load. And you don't want that to burn up, but the other SCRs don't really have much of a load on them, except for the one here, which is discharging the feed capacitor to turn the MOSFET. What it does is it just basically shorts out that 220 UF capacitor. So that will have some, some current across it, but a small SCR should work okay. The one that's triggering the circuit could be very very small. I would say there's probably only less than 100 milliamps going across that. So you could use a very small and expensive SCR to trigger it. You'll need a moderately powerful one for the first capacitor and then for the final capacitor you'll need a very large SCR. And an SCR just turns on and off just like a relay but it can handle very high current and it's solid state. Now, 
the thing about an SCR is if you have power flowing across the cathode and anode, the two pins there, if you have power flowing across it, it won't shut off. So once you've stimulated the gate and turned it on, the SCR will just keep flowing and flowing and flowing, which is a huge disadvantage. But if you can drain all the power out of the circuit, then the SCR switches off. It doesn't matter if you put negative voltage to the gate or if you disconnect the gate from power. The SCR requires that the circuit be completely drained of energy between the anode and cathode, otherwise it will just stay on. So the way that I accomplish shutting this circuit off is I drain the primary capacitor by using this SCR here to short circuit that primary capacitor. And that turns the, the voltage from that capacitor and you can see I send it over to the triggering SCR. So the triggering SCR loses its power. The other two SCRs lose their power because they're shorting out capacitors. So that's how it works. Um, the arrow on the bottom there designates ground, so that goes to the ground. And basically, you're just simply switching on the SCR, which sends um, a ground straight to your load. And then your capacitor is able to discharge through the load. And that's how the SCR works. And you're triggering it with a 500 ohm resistor to the gate of the SCR from the cathode of an SCR placed over here. So there's not much to it. You could use anything you want for the auxiliary high voltage generator. Another thing I just wanted to show you real quick, I actually made the heat sink out of a chunk of computer heat sink off of the CPU. So this was half of a CPU. I, I cut it right in half. The CPU fan heat sink. I cut it in half. And that's what I ended up making this heat sink out of. I'll show you the circuit again. So this potentiometer here actually controls the voltage. You can adjust it from 100 to 400 volts, currently the way it's configured. And the potentiometer over here is going to the gate of the MOSFET. That potentiometer controls the rate of charge on the 220 UF capacitor. So the slower you charge this capacitor, the longer the delay between turning the primary MOSFET on. So that's how it works. And you can, you can set the delay very, very long because a MOSFET doesn't require really any significant current to turn on because it has a nearly infinite resistance on the gate to turn it on. So basically you can turn this potentiometer to 50,000 ohms and it will charge that capacitor very slowly and the circuit will still turn on and um, a transistor won't turn on with a 50,000 ohm on the base it just doesn't really turn on very well you need a little bit of current to turn a transistor on but with a MOSFET the input on the gate basically acts like a capacitor so it, it does take some significant current initially but then it goes to infinite resistance after a brief charge and that's on the gate to turn it on so we can get away with using that potentiometer and we can just slowly charge up that capacitor which then turns on the primary transistor or MOSFET I should say and then that turns the whole circuit on and I'll show you what happens when you put metal on it So that was a steel washer. The coil is pulsing right now. So that's the circuit. And this circuit could be used for any number of things if you want a repeating capacitor discharge. Now keep in mind you could replace the resistor that triggers it with a push button switch. 
and you can easily just turn this into a manual circuit and it will work exactly the same way and you could also eliminate most of the delay so that the circuit repeats very very quickly although this circuit is not made to function as fast as a car ignition and I'm not sure that you would want to try this circuit for something like that it would be better suited to very low frequency pulsing so if you're interested there it is I'm giving you the circuit for free and here it is here so I hope that helps and if you have any questions about how to build it just uh, drop me a line and if you could visit my site ritali.com r-i-t-a-l-i-e dot com. Thanks guys.